Welcome back to Copper Star Precision, the channel dedicated to getting you more points at your competitive shooting matches. We are still continuing on with the Ruger Precision Rimfire Rifle build, and in the last video I discussed how you could find the appropriate scope height, and you can see I've gone ahead and attached some scope rings. Now this might not be the final position of the rings because we have to set the scope up for eye relief, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And I cannot stress how important it is when you're doing anything with scope rings, get yourself a really good torque wrench, uh, preferably in inch pounds. This one's relatively affordable and I found it's fairly accurate. It's the Tecton brand. It goes from 10 to 150 inch pounds. I'll put a link in the description for this. This is really useful. I also have fix it sticks, which are a quick fix in the field, but this gives you ability to dial in exactly to the inch pound um, what torque setting you need. So what do we have going on? I have the rifle here on a tripod, uh, which is another advantage of that Arca rail that we installed a couple episodes ago. Um, as you can see, the 60 degree bolt throw really helps clear these scope rings. So that's an advantage of this style platform. Other 90 degree bolt throws may interfere with the scope ring. So keep that in mind if your bolt throw is 90 degrees instead of 60. Um, the rifle is clear and we won't need the bolt for this part, so I will just take that out. And of course, if you've been following the channel, then we're using the Bushnell Match Pro Scope right here. And we talked, again, in episodes previous, how to make sure that we have enough clearance over the handrail here. If you don't have a handrail and you just have the barrel, you actually have a little bit more wiggle room. Um, but because we have a handguard, we had to make sure our scope rings were high enough. So today is all about kind of setting that eye relief. And I'll put a picture up here. It'll also probably be the cover photo for this episode of what we're trying to accomplish. And the idea is that if you are set too far or too close to the scope, you're not going to get the full picture, sight picture, through the scope. You'll see either like a cloudy black ring or it will be like looking down a tube. Um, depending if you're close or far away from the scope. Now each scope has different eye relief. Usually they're around three to four inches. Some are more forgiving than others. And it also, in the majority of scopes that I've had experience with, it changes with magnification. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start, we're gonna put the scope on the rifle and we're gonna get it situated and we're gonna see if we need to move these rings or not. Uh, for the proper eye relief. But in order to do that, we also have to have proper cheek weld. So another thing we're going to be going over in this video. So let's take our scope. And the reason I put the rings the way they were, I think it's like two Picatinny slots uh, from the back and two from the front. But the idea is that, and each scope is going to be different, but if you, could, if you notice, if I put uh, the two sections of the scope, the scope tube that is behind all of the controls and the scope tube that is after all the controls. This one's a little bit longer, but I wanted to give it a spot and a distance where I could get a fair amount of back and forth movement because we will be playing, like I said, with that eye relief. So without further ado, the first thing we should do is probably put the top rings on here. So I don't, if I bump this, the scope won't go flying off. Now we're not torquing these down. We're just going to quickly engage the threads to make sure that the scope isn't going to fall off the rifle. Okay, so now that we have the top scope rings on so this won't go anywhere, I can't, it's not gonna fall off the rifle. Um, you can see I still have full forward and back and, and ability to level the scope because they're not tight at all, they're just holding the scope there. So let's start kind of in that middle position. I'm starting at the lowest magnification, which is gonna give me uh, sort of the most forgiving eye box, so to speak. And the first thing we're gonna do is we need to set this cheek piece so that when we get onto the rifle, uh, we see when we open our eyes or look through the scope, we're looking directly through the center of the scope. And the reason I have it on this tripod here, a lot of people do this in the prone position, but I found that in NRL 22 matches and PRS matches, most of the time we're shooting off a barricade. Yes, there's maybe one or two prone stages, but you're shooting off some sort of barricade. So you could imagine this being like a bag under here on the tip of a tank trap or on a ladder rung. So I think it's important to do kind of this like 
not fully standing upright, but a normal position where you would approach a barricade. Um, you could also do this at a kneeling position, but I just have it this height so it's easier to film. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to close our eyes. And another important thing about like length of pull, which I've already set for myself, wear something that you would normally wear to the match. So if you're in cold weather and you're wearing a jacket or something, you want to make sure you're wearing that while you set all this up, especially for length of pull, uh, if that's what you're going to be wearing during the match. So with that being said, first thing we do is close our eyes. We're going to simply get a comfortable cheek position and then we're going to open our eyes. And I can tell right now that I am way too low. So I am looking pretty much at the scope base. So the first thing we need to do is adjust this upward. As far as cheek weld positions go, some people like a little bit of a chin weld where it's just hovering here. I prefer a, a more of a cheek weld where it's going up and basically contacting my cheekbone. It's all personal preference. There's no right or wrong way to do it. I like the cheek weld because for me and my facial structure, it allows me to get my eye closer to the scope because if I'm out here versus I can push in towards the scope a little bit more. Not that you should be putting significant pressure on the cheek piece, but it just lines my eye up better given my facial structure. So you have to play around with what makes sense for you. So let me get this adjusted and we'll be right back. All right, so I've gotten the cheek piece a little higher than it once was. And to me, this works well. So that when I get down on the scope, I come down, my eyes are closed and I open my eyes. I'm looking straight through the crosshairs. Now, the eye relief is not set properly at this stage, but I do see the middle of the crosshairs just in a natural position. So now what we need to do is simply slide this back and forth until we see that ring or that shadow go away. So I'll just do that. I'm gonna get down, close my eyes. I'm still in the right spot. And then I'm going to play with the eye relief. So here I can see very little of the rect uh, reticle. There's a big black shadow donut. I'm gonna just go out. And right about there actually is pretty good. So we got lucky, we didn't have to move the rings. Now you still may have to move these rings if you want to add attachments and you need room on the scope tube if you're doing something like an anti-cant device, uh, bubble level, uh, dope card holder, anything like that. But for me, that's pretty good. And I am on the lowest magnification. So I'm gonna hold this steady. And now that we know we're in the ballpark, I'm going to go to the highest magnification of the scope because the eye box is gonna be even less forgiving. So I'm gonna close my eyes, approach the rifle like I normally would, open my eyes. And now we can kind of fine tune right about there. And I think that's it. So we're in good shape there. And in fact, this ring is now kind of touching the reticle housing. So I may have to go in and move that ring maybe forward one notch, but actually I do kind of like having a hard stop. Um, you want to make sure you're not crushing the scope tube when you do this, but that gives me enough real estate up here to add any kind of accessories that I would want. So just to confirm, we're going to go back holding this steady, go back to the lowest magnification, make sure both ranges are good. And then I also like to check around 12 to 14 power, which is probably the most common. The most common power that I use, and we're good there. So now we've set up the scope for eye relief. So now that we've set up the scope for eye relief, the next thing to do is going to be to try and level this scope and this won't be the final level of the scope because what we're going to do is actually use a plumb bob at a distance to level the scope, the reticle to the rifle. But just to get in the ballpark, you can take something flat. Here I'm using my calipers and they're generally on the bottom of the scope housing is a flat spot. So all I'm going to do from here is stick this in one of the Picatinny grooves and by rotating this up, it's going to give me 
a flat surface to compare to. Now, the, again, this is not the most precise way to do this. They sell all kinds of silly scope leveling kits. But the final test is going to be when we actually take this, look through the scope, and line up the regular, uh, reticle to a known level. Generally a plumb bob, you can also hang a target if you have like a you know, two foot, four foot level, make sure everything is level there. So now we should have to torque these down. Again, I cannot stress enough that torque specifications from the manufacturer are extremely important. These are Vortex tactical rings. The clamps on to the Picatinny rail are torqued uh, between um, 35 and 45 inch pounds for this model. It may not be the same for other Vortex rings. So I went with in between at 40 inch pounds and the top rings are 15 to 18 inch pounds. So I'll probably just do 15 inch pounds. Again, there's not a lot of recoil on 22 rifles, so we wouldn't expect things to shift. Um, so I'm just gonna torque these up and then, I mean, we're almost there. We are pretty much set up. We're gonna have to level the scope and then we're gonna take it out to the range. We're gonna zero the scope and then we're gonna do the lot testing and if lot testing doesn't provide reasonable results, I know ammunition is hard to find. We can try and take our best lot of ammunition that's available to us that we have a lot of, or we can purchase locally or get a hold of quickly in case of a match coming up. And we'll take that and we'll put a barrel tuner on it to see if we can even tighten up that group more. So thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to continue with this series. And with any luck, I'll be able to take this to a match and enter in base class and see how that compares to my open class scores. So we'll see how, how much uh, base class can compete. Hopefully the rifle is accurate. We're almost there. We're almost at the fun pew pew stage of the, the videos. So thanks for hanging in there and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, score more points.